we'll walk through the steps that cause the symptoms of chickenpox in this video. So first, um, you're going to draw a picture of a guy's head. You can do this. You'd be amazed. Everybody can do a little bit of drawing, right? It's not so bad. Give him an ear, give him an eye, and maybe a few hairs, right? All right, so the first thing that happens if you get out your purple pen is that the varicella virus has to be um, inhaled or possibly um, a little bit of the virus could be on someone's hands from touching someone else's um, chicken pox pustules. So the virus is inhaled, like by coughing, or um, contact with pustules from someone else that has chicken pox. And those pustules then, or sorry, those viruses go into the respiratory tract. So that's the first step. Now, the second step is um, kind of shocking in a way how this virus is so successful in what it does. It's actually because it invades our own white blood cells. So for step number two, I'm going to use a blue pen. And step number two, the virus invades our white blood cells. A little bit of a shocker there, right? So it's definitely taking advantage of our own immune system for its needs. Okay, so then what happens next? Well, now that they're white blood, if they're in the white blood cells, they're able to travel systemically wherever the white blood cells go and they preferentially want to go to the skin. So step number three is that they travel to the skin. They kind of hitched a ride with the white blood cells. And they cause inflammation there as they're infecting the cells of our skin. Now, when a virus is damaging our cells as it passes through them, we call this the lytic stage or phase because it's damaging our cells. And that word lytic means to break. And this is where the symptoms of chickenpox come from. So if you think about chickenpox, most people are fairly familiar. Uh, the chickenpox symptoms caused by varicella virus include itchy, painful pustules, a fever, because it is a systemic illness, and um, note that it is highly contagious. So the virus is rampant in those pustules, and so if the child itches the pustules and they get some of the virus under their fingernails, and then they touch something else and then another child could get it. Also, because it's systemic and it began in the respiratory tract, the coughing um, could actually spread the virus as well. So these are the classic symptoms of chickenpox caused by varicella. Okay, so now is where things get a little bit complicated because in the process of this infection, of course our adaptive immunity is trying to work. So 
As you might remember from learning about adaptive immunity, what has to happen is that the helper T cells recognize some of the antigen of the virus. Okay, so now we're going to kick into action adaptive immunity. So you're going to have uh, B cells making antibodies. I'm going to put abs for antibodies. Move this up a little bit for you. So we've got abs to, or antibodies to um, varicella virus, VCV, circulating in the blood. And we also, of course, have the cytotoxic cells. Sometimes they're called TC or uh, CD8 cytotoxic cells. So our immune system is ready to take out this bugger. It is ready to make us immune to the chickenpox. What happens though at this point is that the virus responds to the threat. And so now imagine that this is um, a spinal cord right here, a little bit of the spinal cord. And here is um, a sensory receptor in our skin. And this is where the cells are infected. So I'm going to use um, an orange. Wait, I just used orange. I will use a purple right here. So imagine that this is um, a skin cell that is infected with the virus. Um, I'll use the virus in blue. So this is infected. Or I guess I was using purple, wasn't I? Okay, so here's the, the varicella virus, and here is a sensory neuron, and as it goes to join the spinal cord, it passes through its cell body in the dorsal root ganglion. So let's use a black pen to label some of these things. Here is, uh, you learn it as called the DRG, but it stands for dorsal root ganglion. And it's where the cell bodies are from sensory neurons that are, so this is the reason that you would be hurting from the skin infection, because these um, neurons are being irritated and firing action potentials up to the brain so you feel itchy, you feel pain. But what happens is the cytotoxic T cells will cause this virus to feel threatened and may encourage a switch from the lytic stage to the lysogenic stage. So now, they go up the axon here. and they hide in the cell body of that dorsal root ganglion. So it may tr trigger a switch from lytic when the virus is actively destroying our cells to lysogenic. Lysogenic, lyso also means break like lytic does, but genic means to be the beginning of it or start it. So it could actually, what this means is that it's hiding, but at any time it could come back again.
So this very action of our own immune system may undermine our ability to fight the disease. So VCV, or the varicella virus, and it may hide there indefinitely. Okay, as I was saying, um, step number four is that VCV may hide in the cell body of the dorsal root ganglion indefinitely. And then you can highlight in blue around that, put a number four. Immunosuppression is really the link between chickenpox and what you know as shingles. What can happen is that immunosuppression, as we age, we might have a decrease in the circulating antibodies to varicella, for example, and then VCV may return to the lytic cycle. But this time, it will be a local infection. Local, only affecting certain dermatomes. only in affected neurons, sensory neurons specifically. Whereas if we compare that to the initial chicken pox that someone may have had, then that is systemic throughout their entire body. So the initial infection is systemic, and because of that, it could even be cough, passed with coughing or sneezing. And then the latent infection, if it occurs with someone, shingles, will be a local infection, and the only way that could be passed to someone is through the pustules itself. So if someone that had shingles, um, they their pustules could actually pass the systemic infection of chickenpox may be to their grandchild, let's say, for example. Okay, so the symptoms of shingles, let's use the red pen for this. So now, instead of talking about chickenpox, it's the same virus, but a local infection called shingles. Shingles symptoms. are localized to dermatomes those are areas of the skin that are um, all receiving sensory information from the same nerve it's notably very painful more painful than the initial infection of chickenpox was and the pustules are contagious But if someone were to contract varicella through a pustule, they would not get shingles. They would get the symptoms of the systemic chickenpox infection. Okay, so another scary thing is that shingles can have a complication of post-herpetic neuralgia, which is basically like pain after the virus has gone back into the cell body to hide again. So post-herpetic neuralgia and this uh, causes long-lasting pain. So if um, the patient is given an antiviral, so let's put this on here, they can be treated with an antiviral like cyclovir. And 
The scary thing is, is that you can't really get rid of it. What you're hoping is that the effect of the antiviral is just going to make the virus go hide again. So that would be what you hope for. You can give um, a vaccination for, for varicella, and the vaccination is um, the same for the shingles and for chickenpox. It's just more um, concentrated for shingles. So let's put that on here with a, a black pen too. So to inhibit this, actually we want to inhibit step number five from happening. So the V, or I should say the shingles vaccine is, uh, the last I read it's 14 times more concentrated. So if someone gets a shingles vaccine, then they're given uh, 14 times more concentrated antigens to varicella than someone that gets a chickenpox vaccine or the initial varicella vaccine. Uh, probably because since the person may already be immunosuppressed, then we are trying to get a boost in the current antibodies that they already have. It could also be that in children, you're more likely to have um, a, a bad reaction if you give too concentrated of a, a vaccine for that. So we can put that on here too. Let's put that right here. Um, so there is a vaccine. The vaccine contains antigens to part of the virus, so our body should hopefully make the antibodies so that the virus can never invade the white blood cells to begin with. The problem is, is that the varicella um, is a live virus, and so the virus itself may actually be able to then go hide in the dorsal root ganglia and um, eventually cause shingles, and they're finding that some children that are vaccinated to varicella develop the symptoms of shingles at a younger age. So that's something that hopefully they can work the kinks out of that vaccine.